In this video, we're going to see how to add Spring and an application context file to a NetBeans project that uses Swing, not to be confused with Spring. So Swing, uh, a user interface library, Spring, a way that we can instantiate objects and assign them to variables. So first of all, I'm going to go to the Plant Client app that I built in a previous video. I'm going to go to Properties. And notice here you don't see anything that says Spring. But I did set this up as a Palm-based, a Maven-based uh, project. So to add Spring, it's quite simple. I simply go to the Palm XML, and then I need to add some dependencies. For the sake of time, I've already created the dependencies in Notepad++, so I can just copy them into here. So first of all, I'm going to say Dependencies, and we'll make an open and close tag for that. Dependencies, there we go. And then I'm going to paste in the dependencies that I've written in advance. I will make these available either in the uh, video comments or on GitHub, so you can paste them just as equally. But you see, as soon as I do this, I'm adding Spring to my application. Okay, so now I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go to Properties. Let's see if we have Spring yet. Uh, I don't see anything in here that indicates that, we, uh, that it knows about Spring, so I'm going to say Build with Dependencies, and we'll give this just a moment. Now it says build success. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to properties again. And here we go, Spring Framework. And you see it has configuration files and nothing is there. I'm going to go back to my project, right click and say new and then other. There's quite a list here. So I'm going to filter it with Spring. And we see Spring XML configuration. I'll select that, choose next, and then we'll stick with a standard name, application context.xml. Uh, folder. This one's a little bit tricky because I do want to keep it out of plant client, but I eventually have to get it into the classes folder. We'll deal with that in just a moment. In any case, I'll go ahead and choose next. Uh, we'll select context as the namespace and then finish. Now, I want to just do a proof of concept and wire this up to see if it works. So I'm going to borrow an, an entry from another spring file I have. Just a very simple bean ID. So what we're referring to here is a class that's in package com.plantplaces.dto, and the class name is plant. Now, I don't yet have that class, so let me go ahead and make it. I'm going to say new Java package and source. We'll say com.plantplaces, and then .dto, and then finish. And for the class, I'm going to say new class, and we'll call it plant, OK? Now, I'm going to borrow, to, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to run to another project I have where I have a very similar uh, class called plant, and it's just a plain old Java object. Uh, so I'm going to borrow that class called plant, paste it in here, do a little bit of tidying up for things that uh, aren't relevant to what I need, and uh, let's see, we'll take care of that as well. Uh, and looks like I need just a couple other classes so I'll tell you what, to make things, well, now let's see. I need also a specimen DTO. This will take just a moment. So there's my specimen. Okay, control A, control C, and right click new class and specimen. And okay, and control A, control V. And again, I'll do a little bit of cleanup here uh, just to make it a plain old Java object, just a plain old DTO and save. I might need one more, might be okay here. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. So in any case, what we've ended up with is just a, a DTO, plain old Java object, with name, genus, species, cultivar, common, graph, uh, global unique identifier, uh, and a collection of specimens. So just a plain Java object, and save. And note that the fully qualified name, com plant places DTO, is the package, and the class name is plant, and that matches exactly what I have put here, com.plantplaces.dto.plant. So, Let's see if we can get Spring to instantiate this object for us in our JFrame form that we made earlier. So again, just a little proof of concept, but I'm going to go to, let's go on up to the, doesn't matter, the constructor's fine. I'll run up to the constructor, and I need to do a little bit of legwork here. So first, what I need to do is I need to say, I need to use a Spring class called Class Path XML Application Context. We'll call that CTX equals new Class Path XML 
application context. And then we need to provide it with the name of our Spring configuration file, which is application context.xml and terminate with the semicolon. Now we get a red line because it doesn't know who this is. So Alt Enter and take a look at this. Do you see add import for org.spring framework, blah, blah, blah? That's really good news because that means that the POM entry that we added earlier works, recognizes that library, and that library is now part of our project. So I go ahead and choose enter, and we're good. Next, I'm going to say ctx and then dot git bean. And take a look at the different, the different parameter list that we have here. One of them accepts a class, and that's really good. Another one takes a name. Uh, name would be good if we wanted to pull up this bean by its ID. But I like the class here, because what I can do then is just say plant.class and I'm telling it exactly what type I want to get out of this. The nice part about that is I can say plant plant equals ctx.getbean. Okay, I can alt enter, add import. Notice there's no casting required. So when possible, I prefer to do it this way um, over a way that we're, would require a cast. It uses a little bit of generic magic to make that work. Next, plant.setcommon, we'll say eastern redbud. And then we'll say plant.setgenus, and we'll say circus. And again, just a proof of concept, we'll consider it successful if we can get a populated plant on line 29. So I'll snap a breakpoint there. I'm going to choose save. Now, there's one thing I have to do here that's a bit of a hack. To be honest, I haven't found a way around this yet. If you know a good way, let me know. Uh, and I will add notes, uh, you know, add, uh, put, put what you, if you find a way to do this better than I do, uh, put a note in the comments. What I mean is this application context right now is not on the class path. And I could not figure out how to easily get it on the class path, aside from manually going over here to files, copy, and then go to target and then classes and paste. Uh, there's a big problem with that, which is, we now have two different application contexts that we have to keep in sync, which is a pain in the rear. So if you know of any good way to get that on the class path one time, leave it in the comments. Uh, if I find a way, I'll update the video with a comment and I'll say how I did it. Uh, so a little hackish, but it works. So I'm going to go ahead now and say debug. And uh, let's see what happens on line 28. That's our real success criteria. So uh, in NetBeans, F8 will step over a line. And F8, we'll give that a second. That's good so far. You see that it executed and the mint green line has moved down to 29, which indicates that it didn't throw an exception in 28, which means even with my little hack approach, it was able to find this file. Now, uh, plant, can it get a plant? We look pretty good. Let's verify that it actually instantiated a plant object and put it into this variable. If I mouse over and I see the plus, Sure enough, there we go. Name, genus, species, cultivar, and common. So this is not the plant constructor, not at all. This is us calling into Spring, and Spring is creating a new instance of that plant class, creating an object out of it, saving it into the variable called plant. Now I can move forward. I can populate some of the variables. And again, we can mouse over, and we can see, sure enough, we've just set the common name to Eastern Redbud, and one more. Uh, we will set the genus to Circus, and uh, at that point, it's going to go out of scope, so we won't see it anymore after this. But nonetheless, we have now proven that we can integrate Spring into a Swing-based application in NetBeans. In our next series of videos, we're going to take a look at Spring Remoting, which is really cool because it lets us interact with a program that's running on a completely different machine as if that program were running right alongside the program we're writing. Really cool stuff. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.